This tutorial is all about the groups and periods of the periodic table and a little about the history of the periodic table, how that came to be and how different scientists worked together or worked upon each other's ideas in order to develop the current ideas about the periodic table. You should know two words about the periodic table. They are group and period. All the elements in the same group of the periodic table have got the same number of electrons and the group number is the same as the number of electrons in that outer shell. You should also recognise that the period to which an element belongs corresponds to the number of occupied shells in the electronic structure and that as you go from left to right across a period you are filling up a particular shell. So the electronic configuration or electronic structure tells us something about the number of electrons in each shell starting from the inside. The group number, same as the number of electrons in the outer shell. The period number, the number of occupied shells. So as an example, we've got 286. From that we can tell that sulfur is in group 6 because the number of outer electrons is 6. And because there are three shells, we know that sulphur is in the third period. And here is sulphur on the third period and the sixth group. Here's a past paper question. It's about the elements in the periodic table. Like in many of these questions, you're given the name of some elements and asked to look at the periodic table in the back of the booklet. Uh, and I've just got a tiny one reproduced here. Uh, each element can be used once, more than once, or not at all. Write down the name of the element with only six electrons in its outer shell. Well, then we're going to look for an element which exists in group six, which is here. Um, of the, those at the top, we've got oxygen or sulfur or selenium, blah, blah, blah. Well, the one we've got here is oxygen, so that's in group six, oxygen. And the name of an element which has the electronic structure 2881. There's a couple of ways we could do that. First of all, we could say, well, it's got four shells, so it's in period four. That's one, two, three, four. So it's in that period, and it's in group one because it's got one outer electron. So that must be this one, which is potassium. Alternatively, what we can do is we can add up that total number of electrons. It comes to 19. And then because the number of electrons in a neutral atom is the same as the protons, we look for the one with the proton number of 19, which is, yes, potassium. And there are our answers. Uh, they'll allow the correct symbol as well, but they did ask for the name, so we've given the name. Here's a very similar question. This one's about elements in the periodic table, of which, again, we're given some examples. And we have to write down the name of an element with eight electrons in its outer shell. If it's got eight electrons in the outer shell, it must be in group zero with a full shell, except it can't be helium. So we look for one of these, which has got, uh, yep, there we go. It's neon. Neon is also in group zero with a full outer shell. Write down the name of an element in the fourth period of the periodic table. Well, the fourth period will be in that one, that one, that one, this one, beginning with potassium and calcium. So we have a look along there. Uh, well, there is potassium, uh, so that will do. I think copper is also in that period. And I think bromine is also in that period as well, so any of those would do. And then write down the name of an element with an electronic structure of 2,4. Right, well, uh, if it's got two, that's period two, so it's along there, and if it's in group four, then it's in there, so they cross at here, which is carbon. The alternative way of doing that, yes, would be to add the two and the four to get six. Six is the number of electrons, it's therefore also the number of protons for the neutral atom, so that one would be carbon. And there's our answer, yes, indeed for 5b we could have had either of those three elements which are all in the same period. Look at the diagram of the electronic structure of an atom. An element contains atoms with this electronic structure. Which group of the periodic table is it in? Well, we look for the number of outer electrons and we can see that it's got one, two, three, four outer electrons. So that must mean it's in group four. And how can you tell this element is in period 3? Well, we look at the number of shells. 1, 
to three shells. So the reason is it has three shells of electrons. And yes, it's in group four and it's got three occupied shells or three shells of electrons. The remainder of this tutorial is about the evidence and observations that caused Newlands and Mendeleev to develop new models of the periodic classification of elements and how at high level Mendeleev's predictions were proved to be correct based upon what was found after his lifetime. So the first of these two scientists was John Newlands. It was he that first discovered that after every seven atoms, the eighth was very similar to the first. Uh, therefore, he arranged the uh, elements into seven vertical groups. Uh, he called this the law of octaves because that's similar to a piano, that every eighth note uh, has a similar note or a similar tone to the uh, uh, one eight before it, like uh, the C and then the next C and so on. Um, he only had seven groups, of course, because all of the eighth group hadn't been discovered yet. They would have been discovered many years later. They were the uh, noble or inert gases, or group zero. So he was pretty good. Um, however, what he did was he arranged all the known elements into the table, and uh, he didn't think ahead and think, well, there will be some elements which have yet to be found. So he tried to rigidly stick them all into the same uh, seven groups and came a little unstuck. And therefore, many other scientists who studied his work disagreed with him and said, well, look, you've got some elements there that are similar, but you've also got some elements there which are not similar. And therefore, uh, we're not very pleased with your work, Mr. Newlands. The big step came five years later when Dmitry Mendeleev, uh, a Russian scientist, published his table. He'd looked at Newland's work and uh, had also arranged the elements in order, but he'd arranged them in order of atomic mass and also arranged them in vertical groups. But unlike Newland's, he prioritised the similar properties more in some cases putting elements the wrong way round in terms of their relative atomic mass, uh, preferring them to be in the same column as other elements which were uh, similar properties. He also, and this is something that Newlands didn't do, left gaps for those elements which he knew would be discovered uh, but hadn't been discovered yet and was also canny enough to predict what the properties of those elements would be. And Mendeleev was uncannily accurate about his predictions. For example, he predicted that there would be an element beneath aluminium in his table and uh, predicted some properties for this. When it was discovered in 1875, uh, it was called gallium, its properties were found to be incredibly close to what Mendeleev had predicted. And... Uh, other predicted elements were later discovered, and again, as this happened, other scientists paid more uh, credence to uh, Mendeleev's predictions and his table, and therefore his table was accepted by the scientific community. Uh, the modern periodic table isn't arranged in order of atomic mass anymore, it's actually arranged in terms of atomic number, in other words the number of protons, but of course at the time of Mendeleev's work, uh, scientists weren't aware of protons or any of the um, particles which were found inside elements and therefore they had to use the best information they had which was atomic mass. Here we can compare Mendeleev's table with the modern periodic table. Mendeleev's on the left as you can see has got the elements in order of atomic mass, nitrogen 14, oxygen 16, fluorine 19 and so on. But look here, there are two elements which are out of order, tellurium at 127 and uh, the J which stands for iodine in this case which is uh, 126.9 and as you can see here, tellurium and iodine in the modern periodic table are correctly in order of atomic number but their atomic masses are actually out of order.